Hi, welcome back. So in this video, I just want to talk about vector valued functions and give you a little introduction into what they are and how they work. So we define a vector valued function with the following. A vector valued function is a function with the parameter t. That t value is a real number. So we're just taking some real number and that is our input. And then it outputs a vector r of t. So it's a function with a parameter t as the input and the vector r of t as the output. So like you might be used to in two dimensions, we might input x and output a y. Here we're inputting a t, which is a real number, and we're outputting a vector. So that's what makes this a little unique and why it's called a vector valued function, and that we're inputting a number and we're outputting a vector. So the way we write this is r of t, where that r is a vector, and it's equal to a three-dimensional vector x of t, y of t, and z of t. So potentially you could have vector value functions with more dimensions, but we're just focusing on three dimensions here. What's especially noteworthy is that each value of t, so each input, is going to correspond to one vector, and that vector is pointing to a single point on the curve. So the way we create the curve is by collecting all of these vectors together, where each t value points to one of the points. So these vector value curves can be really complicated and hard to visualize. You can come up with all sorts of things for these. And so what I'm going to focus on is just showing you some of the possibilities for what curves we can get. And then we'll do more math about like what we can do with vector valued functions, but I'm not gonna focus too much on what they look like because this can be really complicated. And as I mentioned, hard to visualize without the help of technology. But let me show you some examples so you can start to see the possibilities of what we might be able to do. So the first vector valued function I've graphed here is cosine of t, sine of t, and t. So this is a helix shape. You can watch as t progresses that this little point just sort of circles its way up at the top. And so it's basically like we have a spiral, but it's just spiraling up since the z value is t, so it's increasing with t. As t gets bigger, the height is going to get bigger. So if we ignore the y-axis and we just look at the x and z, z is just the function t, so whatever t is, it's just giving us that t value, but then x is cosine of t. So that's why we're seeing this cosine graph here. Similarly, if we ignore the x component and just look at the y and z, y is sine, and so we should be seeing a sine graph here. Then if we ignore the z component and look at just the x and y, we're getting a unit circle. That's because we have x is cosine of t and y is sine of t, which corresponds to the unit circle. Okay, so that's a pretty like standard example of something cool we can do with this parameterized curves or vector valued functions. But we can really do anything we want. And so I'm just going to pick maybe another simple example and just show you how this can really change depending on what we do. So here I've put t in the x component and t squared in the y component. And so if I ignore z, this actually looks just like a parabola, like you'd expect if we had x and x squared, but here we have t and t squared. Then I can sort of adjust what we do in the z component to change what's happening. So here with zero as z, it's just sitting on the xy plane, there's no z height. But if I increase z to just be one, then we're up at one, we're sort of floating there, I can go two, three, etc., and I can raise this parabola-like shape by changing the value of z. Then I can do something interesting, like I can put t in the z component, and so when we look at like x and z, which are both t as what we have there, we now have this straight line. It looks like y equals x, but Obviously, that's not quite what we have here. We have t and t as our x and z components. And so we get this parabola, but it's sort of like tilted through the space. And so we can do all sorts of interesting things with this. Like I can put um, e to the t in my z position, and you can see an exponential function sort of come through. Or I can put t cubed in my z component and sort of watch this cubic shape show up. So just by adjusting that one component, we're really changing up the shape. And so by experimenting with different things, you can get a lot of unrecognizable stuff, or maybe it's not so easy to see what's in each component. But here, if we just put some interesting things in, we can sort of watch the graph change. 
Okay, so that's just a little introduction into vector valued functions to get you thinking about what some of the possibilities are. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one. Thank you.